you guys and welcome back to my channel today we'll be discussing six tips to starting your staging business I know you guys are so excited about that um, we finally get into some details about how to start and get a jump start on starting your business so let's get into it so the first things first um, when you're thinking about starting your staging business um, you can go about this in so many different ways. Once you do all the administrative work, and that means getting your um, lawyer, insurance, uh, paying for your LLC or sole proprietorship. Um, I'm sorry, not paying for it, but registering your LLC or sole proprietorship. Um, then you move into actually progressing the staging business. You want to familiar yourself with basically different decorating styles. Now, um, to be a home stager, it's always best to be familiar with these various decorating styles because you never know what you'll be walking into. Um, common styles are usually contemporary, modern, traditional, and coastal and eclectic styles um, that you usually will stage or you usually find these pieces within people's homes. So you always want to be aware of the kind of styles that you'll be walking into and be surrounded by. Um, usually whenever you're staging, it's good to understand and know where to pull from and how to make the room be harmonious and functional within that style. So getting yourself familiar with these decorating styles is always going to help you and then too it'll help you develop your niche as well so then you'll understand exactly what kind of stylist or stager you really are like myself i'm a contemporary and modern stager so i do use traditional styles depending on the um occupied homes furniture but for the most part if i'm doing a vacant stage it's mostly going to be in contemporary and modern styles. So I know my niche. I know where my strong suit is. And that's how I market myself. So keep those in mind whenever you're studying up the styles. Exactly what you gravitate towards. And what your niche will end up becoming. That way you know exactly how to market yourself within the business. Rent or purchase furniture to use for clientele. Um... There's two different ways you can go about this. So, like I said, you can either rent furniture from uh, vendors, i.e. court, BFR, um, AFR stage, or AFR furniture. Um, these are places that you can rent furniture for home staging. They do provide home staging services and they work with home stagers. So, you can be able to go online, price up a quote, and rent those big bulky pieces um, a lot of times when you are a new stager is usually the more common way of getting into the business and renting um, bulk furniture. So bulk furniture being the big furniture, the bed, <laughs> uh, chairs, dining sets, uh, dressers, all those heavy lifting things. Um, that way you can put a lot of your focus on the accessories. So you can inventory the accessories throughout time and just consistently rent furniture pieces that you can accessorize later. So if you are a sole proprietor and you don't have any actual aid or staff members, that's probably the way you wanna start your business and digging into it. So I will always suggest renting furniture. Um, I am a sole proprietor, so I usually work by myself and I have an, an assistant with me from time to time, depending on how big the project is. But I usually don't have a lot of staff, so I rent my bulk furniture. That way I can cut costs on my overhead and I won't really have to worry about storage facilities um, and a big massive storage facility necessarily. And if I have an empty room in my house, then I can utilize that as my storage for my accessories and pieces like that. So I cut down on a lot of costs that way. Um, or you can purchase furniture and when purchasing the furniture, basically going out, purchasing the beds, purchasing chairs, purchasing the accent pieces um, like coffee tables, side tables, um, nightstands, dressers, all those different things and housing those so you can be able to just pull from and utilize it. When you actually purchase the furniture, that is when you'll end up having to actually have the cost of staff members so you'll need to have you know movers and installers so people that will assess you and in basically installing 
so you always want to go ahead and be mindful of the cost that you'll need to go ahead and put aside from when you do have furniture of your own and the cost that you will need to put aside if you are just renting furniture so always keep that in mind but those are your two options in order to be able to get furniture and start staging um, establish a service contract for your clients so I have a lot of uh, other newbie stagers that tend to go and on my Facebook groups and always ask the questions like hey I'm trying to develop a contract I don't know where to start um, can anybody share something or do you guys suggest certain things that need to be in your contract and what so have you so with the contract I always suggest a template to start from um, I have a template contract that I usually will send out to newbie stagers when asked um, I found this online I digged 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 dig deep <laughs> um, and starting to research about contracts for staging I know it's not a lot of work that shows up on Google um, when you are trying to find information to assist you and sometimes the wording cannot be there and you can be missing some things that you need to have in your contract so I found a template that I that I use and I just switch it I look at the different um, wordings that it suggests and I kind of just change it as the years go by that better assist me and my company and I usually send that out to stagers so if you are interested in receiving that contract um, so you can be able to use it as well just as a start please email me um, you can visit my website and just contact me through my contact tab and I'll be sure to get that to you as soon as possible in pronto um, but here's some key things that you guys could use and need to have in your actual service contract um, your payment information your description of the service is always key that way you can describe exactly what it is that you're doing what you're providing um, when it comes to your payment information um, always suggesting if you're taking a deposit how many days um, that you'll need to be paid beforehand how many days to relinquish all payments um, before you actually go out and stage so those are key things that you need to have in your payment information section uh, consent from client basically acknowledging the fact that you are bringing in furniture um, you will be switching their furniture around you'll be taking pieces out putting pieces in moving from one room to another room switching furniture like that um, you'll be on basically helping them with the staging so all these different things that's more hands-on between you and the um, and the client you're basically having that consent in there from the client giving you that consent to do all those things within our house as in nailing pictures up on the wall removing pictures all these different things um, hold and harmless so the hold and harmless is basically identifying that the client does not hold you accountable for any of their problematic things in their house that means if furniture gets damaged they do not hold you accountable um, because things move around a lot and sometimes things could be already damaged before you even get there you don't want them to hold you accountable for something that you did not do right so you want them to hold themselves accountable for every single thing that happens to their furniture in their house um, you're just there to assist them and that's about it um, you don't want to go ahead and have that be a legal situation where it's put on you so you can easily include that into your in, um, into your contract to where they're holding themselves accountable and they're having insurance for their um, furniture pieces and you're not held liable for anything that happens within their actual home and their furniture you're only going to be reliable for your actual furniture and vice versa so that's something to make sure that you keep in there um, photography and publicity release you also want to go ahead and have that into your contract because you want to make sure that the homeowners and realtors know that hey you will be having um, you will be keeping acknowledgement that you will have rights to those photos that's being used and you would like them to go ahead and give you those rights to those photos um, most times if you have a photographer you'll obviously have to go through that contract with them um, and wording it specifically for your contract most of the time whenever you get a photographer they have full rights of the photos that they're taking pictures of and then they'll they release those rights to either homeowner or you um so if you're in contact and you work closely with somebody that's a photographer more than likely they'll release those rights to you first 
um, or the client. Just make sure that you guys have that level of communication that everybody understands exactly what's being done and you have that communication in your actual contract. Um, Pre-stage cleaning. You want to make sure that the house is clean before you go in and stage anything. Uh, we have a lot of problems when it comes to clients that sometimes get really swamped, overwhelmed, and the house could be not cleaned. I mean, they have to get a cleaner to come in or they're cleaning or what so have you. You want to make sure that the house is cleaned and free of everyone. The only thing that you want to have be available in that house is the fact that if you're doing the Occupy staging, you want to have the person that's going to be there to assist you, which is one of the homeowners or the homeowner and everybody else outside of the house during that time when you're doing the actual staging. Um, because most times, like if they hire you, either you'll be assisting them directly with changing everything around um, or you'll be having your actual assistant there. So then you don't want to have any homeowners there at all. That way you can have the free to roam and move everything without any problems, without any suggestions, because you will have the sole right and consent of implementing your suggestions and executing them. And they're giving you that consent. So you don't want to necessarily have so many people in the house. You don't want to necessarily have so much dust and things being roamed around. You don't want the house to be cluttered, dusty, or dirty. That's just it. So when you're coming into work, you're coming into work to a clean home that is empty and ready to go and or a clean home that is empty of people and ready for you to assist and stage. Um, Pro-rated pricing. You also want to go ahead and have that in there. You can always keep it out and just kindly tell your clients that you're not servicing pro-rating, um, that you're not giving pro-rate prices or you are. I usually keep it in my um, my contract that way. There's no if and buts about it. We don't have to talk about it any further. If it pops up, hey, it's in the contract. You signed the contract. You've obviously seen what was listed before you had um, signed off on it. You can easily go back to it just to refresh your memory about it. Um, but you are aware that we don't service prorated pricing. Um, and prorated pricing is basically meaning if you are renting furniture from a rental um, facility please keep in mind that they do not prorate that means if the house was listed if the lease was basically for three months and the house sells in like a month right they're not going to give you those last two months money back <laughs> because the house sold in a month they're going to keep those three months money and you'll just be in a loss of the three months that you paid for leasing the furniture, right? So if you own the furniture and let's say something like that happened and you're basically, you know, they use it for 30, for just a month, 30 days, and they have their lease for 30 days, but then the house sells in 15. Um, they will want to get back whatever that amount of money to offset the fact that the house selling in 15 days versus the whole 30 days that they had leased the furniture for. Um, you have the right to do with that however you please. I don't necessarily uh, provide prorated pricing um, because I do rent furniture. So I always wanna list that in my contract that, hey, no, there is no prorated pricing because the furniture companies do not um, service prorating. So whatever the amounts of money that they request ahead of time for three months lease, you're paying that three months lease. And if you sell in a month, that's fine. That's great. But you are not getting that offset amount of money back. And that's just explaining that thoroughly in your contract. So also de-staging. Um, you want to have something in there about de-staging. Uh, you want to have something in there about uh, the fact of your... <laughs> information needing to be I mean your furniture pieces need to be given back to you and the furniture pieces for the actual rental furniture needs to be given back to the company um, I would always suggest tagging your furniture basically making your own labels that way they are well aware of what's what um, they can easily look underneath the the accessory pieces that you provide and say okay this is you know Binky's interiors and this is court so then there's no confusion um, and you want to let them know that when destaging in your contract to let you know prior to however many days prior to the destaging date 
for the furniture company. So you want to be able to go in there and get your furniture pieces as well as making sure that, you know, everybody that every furniture piece that was um, taken from the vendor is available and ready to be sent back as well. Um, they are responsible for that furniture. So if you are doing a rental, you want to make sure that the homeowners are renting that furniture specifically personally and it's not being you on the contract list from the vendor company uh, because you don't know how long it will sell you never want to put your name down as the actual person that's renting the furniture you want to make sure that you have that communication be between the owner and the furniture company period Whoever signs the contract is the one that's paying for every longevity that they're holding the furniture. So you want to make sure that the homeowners or necessarily are the ones that's paying the contract, um, signing the contract and paying for the furniture rental and not yourself as a business. And so that's done with the established service contract for clients. I know it was a lot. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, next thing you want to do is develop a team of professionals uh, to help you. So like I said, you always want to be able to have a list of people that you know you can call on or refer. So if you need to refer cleaners, you want to be able to have that list of cleaners that you can be able to give the clients. That way they can contact them and you know that the job will get done before you're actually able to come in and stage. Um, if you need a contractor, you want to make sure that you have a list of three to five contractors that you can be able to utilize and send out for painting and or contracting work. If they need a handyman to fix some things, plumbing, what so have you, you want to make sure that you have that person's number on file as well as um, movers, landscapers, things of that nature. So you want to make sure that you build your team up so then they are reliable and you know they can get the job done, that way everybody is winning in a situation and there's nothing that you really have to worry about and there's nothing that the client really has to worry about when hiring these people because they know the job will get done sufficiently and effectively and on time. Um, network with realtors and homeowners. So as a home stager, that is your biggest, biggest thing that you'll be doing probably 75% of the time. Actually, 80% of the time. So you'll be networking probably 80% of the time until your company really gets established and starts getting the ball rolling. Um, starting out, you need to hit up every real estate company that you can think of, research Google, um, for sale by owner properties, FSBOs. Uh, you want to try to connect with them as much as possible. Cold calling. I know a lot of people get social anxiety. I get social anxiety from time to time. Um, you want to cold call. There are other means of reaching out to people's phone numbers. If you are high in social anxiety and you only like to talk when it's actually time for you to talk, um, you can use Slide Dial. Slide Dial is a good um, app to use. And that sends out pre-recorded messages directly to people's voicemails. So if you want to bypass the fact of actually talking to people, um, personally on the phone because you're cold calling and you want to just let them know that you exist but you want to give them the option to contact you when they're ready you can always slide out and that sends a pre-recorded message directly to their voicemail um, if it doesn't go through you might have to go ahead and cold call and you know let them know physically face to face or over phone like hey how are you this is my company I provide these services are you interested yada 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 um, another app that's good to use, uh, is easy texting. That is a group blast texting app that you can utilize. So you know how you get, uh, marketing text messages from certain companies. That is a form of that. So you get a pre-recorded, um, not pre-recorded, a pre number, like text phone number or whatever that gets sent in to everybody's text feed. So it could be 34905 and that's what pops up every time somebody gets a text message. And that's just your business number from Easy Texting that you're utilizing as your platform number to send out text messages. And when you send out text messages, it could be your regular marketing messages geared towards your business. And you can have the word stop on there that they can text stop. Um, but you can always send those messages um, repeatedly. That way it kind of gets the ball rolling and having people acknowledge the fact that you exist. And they can easily contact your um, 
you physically with your phone number or with your website that you tag into the text message and basically request your services there. So those are two good options to hit people's phones if you do have social anxiety. Um, but like I said, if it doesn't go all the way through, then you will have to go ahead and talk to people face to face or over phone or however whatsoever. So just be mindful of that. But those are options to help you be able to connect with people. Um, advertise your services. So you will need to advertise your services. This is just as much as networking with realtors and home stagers, oh, not home stagers, homeowners. Um, so you will need to advertise your services. I will always suggest brochures, business cards. You know, business cards are probably number one. Um, brochures that you can hand out to um, homeowners or realtors when you go to their companies, buildings. Um, flyers that you can post up around the city or around your neighborhood. Um, I also would suggest door hangers. Um, I was suggested this from another home stager and she actually fared off very well with doing this. So door hangers come in very, very neat, neat handies of going around your neighborhood and just posting up door hangers about, you know, a nice little information about your business. So you can customize it, um, tweak it. You can go on Vistaprint and they have door hanger templates that you can utilize and customize and you can put your information on there. Once you put your information on there about home staging, you can have it printed, shipped to you once you get them. Um, I think they come in 50 in a pack. So once you get them, you can go around the neighborhoods that you, you know, see a lot of uh, houses being sold in. So kind of just research that and go around those neighborhoods where houses are really popping out being sold. And you can basically door hanger in that neighborhood, just putting your information out there on door hangers and then putting it up on people's entrance doors. And, you know, they'll be able to get that information when they come home or when they actually like look at their mail or whatever and research it and keep it on file. That way, whenever they're ready to go ahead and call you, they have that as a means of like a business card or brochure and they can research your website and look at more details and things like that. And then you can start generating revenue, um, not revenue, generating leads that way. Um, also social media marketing is also a good advertising platform. You can do Google marketing as well. Um, but your probably big places will be Facebook and Instagram, but more so Facebook. So you can always spend like a hundred dollars on just Facebook, Google ads, um, not Facebook, Google, but Facebook ads. So if you have a business page, for your company on Facebook, you can easily be able to do a Facebook ad and it's always best to do a direct ad versus doing a boost from a post. Um, you want to do a direct ad. You want to create that ad and actually directly send it out and not do a Facebook post and then boost it. Um, the booster posts don't really connect as well as the actual ads, so I will always advise you to do an ad instead of a post boost. Um, and those generally fare off more. At least you'll get more people within the area or the demographic area that you're trying to relate to. Um, and they'll be able to see it, click it, what so have you. You can put keywords. Um, you can tweak it to however you need it to be. That way it registers to the right people that you're trying to um, gauge for the audience. So I will always say utilize social media. That's your best bet. Create a website. Um, utilize social media to blast it. You can use Google, Google Ads, um, Blip, which is a billboard, electrical billboard option. You can pay money to create a Blip. Um, those are usually in bigger cities. So I know like where I'm at in Georgia, they have it in Atlanta, they have it in um, Auburn, Alabama, Montgomery and things like that. So those are bigger market areas and you can easily Google blip, um, research it, find out a little bit more information about it and you can then create your billboard. Um, you can use Photoshop, <laughs> uh, Canva, is another option as well to create marketing materials so you can probably use canva and use youtube banner um on canva to create your actual um blip banner i think the dimensions is pretty much relatively the same 
and you can use that to create your blip banner and once you finish it you make it post it up on blip and see and have it marketed so have it feed out on blip and show off on highways that's another option um that's more feasible <laughs> Uh, if you want to do billboard wise, um, that's more feasible and an option to get your name and your business out there and something quick that people can easily drive down the highway, see for that short period of time, probably keep note about it, take a picture, whatever that they need to do and being able to contact you. So there's different forms and ways of going out about advertising your service. Um, these are free ways and a little bit of paid ways, but at least it's starters to basically get your ball rolling and getting your business name out there so you can start working so i hope this helped you guys i know this is probably like a little bit lengthy not too much but just enough to get you guys rolling and get you guys um informative about how to get your staging business off the ground i know i had basically like i want to say two weeks off without actually filming anything i'm sorry you guys with everything that's going on in the world, I just needed a breather and a moment to just relax and take a step back and then come back. <laughs> um, so I cannot wait to continue making videos for you guys. I hope you guys share these um, videos, share the content with others, um, share it with other friends that are staging newbies. I can't wait to build up this community and this uh family that we are making together so thank you guys for viewing this video i hope to see you guys next week well actually two weeks from now i won't be making the videos every week but i will be making it every two weeks that way i can kind of give myself a breather because i am doing another youtube channel for my modeling so i'm trying to offset making videos without swamping myself every day so Thank you guys for watching. I love, love, love you guys. And I will see you guys next two weeks from now. Bye.